Kobe, 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 Kobe.com. Some years, the math part of this project will start in class, and other years, you'll begin it as homework. And so in case you're beginning this project as homework, I need to tell you a few things. First of all, what is a budget? We're, we're creating a budget for your project, and is a, bud, a budget is a, a listing of expenses, things that you'll be spending money on to create your project, and a list of income. And I'm showing you um, my example budget. The video will take you through um, all the steps I use to create my example budget. And then you can use it as a framework for creating your own budget. Um, you see, I have expenses listed here on the left and income listed on the right. Um, I've done some formatting. I've done some. Um, uh, I've inserted some notes into cells. These are all things that you'll that you'll see um, called out on the rubric that I gave you in class. To give you an example of what your budget might look like um, by the time you're done, here's an example of a student's budget from last year. I think this was. Um, Betsy and Sophie Sturgis's budget for their project. They had many expenses that they had researched. They have cell references where they found the prices. And then they had ideas for generating income and even a cell reference here for this for this cell. You can see that um, if, you, if I click on different cells and you look up here, you'll see that there, there are functions in the cells and those functions match what's described in the video. You'll learn all that as you go through the video. But all of these, including the, um, the bar graphs or some sort of graphical representation of your budget, are things that are, are represented in the rubric that I gave you. And so after you're done, I'll paste, I'll, I'll grade it using the rubric, and I'll paste this right, in, right into your budget that you'll be sharing with me um, and, and give you a grade based on the rubric. So that sort of shows you where we're headed. And the, the project that I, I used to create my example budget is based on this River Interceptor project. So I think I'm going to mute this and just um, talk over the video. Um, obviously, plastic in the oceans is a huge problem. And there are these river interceptors that have been deployed. Um, and as, as the plastic is carried down, carried by the river current, it's the natural current of the river sweeps the plastic into these interceptors and the, the barriers are set up in a way that boats can still move through the river, as you can see. And so I, I sort of imagined I was deploying one of these interceptors on the Caloosahatchee River and what it would take to, to, to build this and all the expenses that I, I would have and what income could be generated. So that's the idea behind the budget that you'll be seeing in the video. Um, there's a lot more I could say about this, but I don't want to make the video any longer than it needs to be. I've posted some links about the um, about the ocean cleanup project and these river interceptors, and so you could read about that on your own or watch some videos on your own if you're interested in this in this um, idea. And I know many of you are, um, you know, very interested in the environment, so you may want to read read a bit more about that, or we may have time in class to talk about it. But I just wanted to get you to the point where you understood what I was basing my example budget on. And so with that, I think the rest of the video will take you through how to create an example budget. All you need to do for homework is get, get it started and, um, and I'll take a look at it in class. And then we'll, we'll talk about how you can work with your partners to turn one of those into your actual budget. So just work, um, if this is homework, just work tonight on creating as much of the example budget as you can using the video. All right, thanks. First thing you want to do is go to, and I don't use I don't use these online applications often. I, I, I prefer to use the the um, the standalone desktop versions, the local versions, because they have more features. However, there's the obvious advantage if you're working with a partner, you can collaborate using the online version. So I I taught myself a lot of this um, as I went, and so you'll have the step by step you know, approach to this if you if you haven't created anything in Excel before, Excel Online. So you all have your OneDrive, you go to Excel, and it will pull, uh, just choose a blank workbook. Uh, the online version will automatically save it, but the, the name will be meaning, will have no meaning. So let's change this to, um, let's just call this budget example. And I'll, I'll just put Colby so you know it's the budget example using the example that I've given you, not your own example. 
um, and then I think if I hit enter that will save that. I'm going to show you how to um, insert cells, use functions in cells, and by using functions that it lets you, um, as you change, as you refine your data, you get new data or you change some data, it will, all of those changes will be reflected in the overall numbers. Um, I think the first thing we should do is to uh, create, um, let's see, I think I'll work a little bit backwards here. Um, I know I'm going to want to have uh, expenses and income, and so I'll I'll just start with expenses, and we'll have several um, columns of data. Description will be so. Go down to uh, A5 and type description. Hit enter, and then right next to that, we'll type um, date. And next to that, amount. Um, and then quantity. Total. And then um, balance. And I'll explain what all of, all of these are as we go. And I know that the column widths are not perfect yet. Um, description, the, the whole word isn't even showing. I'll, I'll show you how to do all that. But first, let's copy all of those because we're going to have expenses and we're going to have income. So I'm going to skip a cell. I'm going to go over to H and just paste all of that. And all of these, um, all of the expenses, all the things we have to pay money for for the project will be on the left side and all the money we make will be on the right side. And so I'm going to take um, these, all of these cells above from A through F, from A3 to F3, and I'm going to use this function merge and center. So I'll click on merge and center, and then that list, lets me give this a title. Uh, these will, will be all of our expenses for the project. And then we'll do the same thing from H3 to M3, merge and center, and give, give these uh, items the title income. Now, um, I purposely left uh, row one blank because it occurred to me that might be a nice place for you to put your, your project idea. So I'll merge and center and make one big cell there. And I'm going to call this um, uh, Calusa, I hope I spelled this right, Calusa Hatchie River. Hatchie River Interceptor Project. Okay, now when you do yours, the, the idea behind what I'm trying to do here with you is show you how to create a spreadsheet for a budget, including some graphics, and then print it. And then that way you'll have an example that you can use to guide you when you create your own budget for your volcano project. But your volcano project um, name would go here. And since that's pretty important, let's bold it. Maybe pick a font that we like, um, a color. No, that's not. Let's go like that either. And then um, make it bolder, bigger. Okay, so that gives it a nice title. We can also do that with expenses and income. We could actually take this whole row and just say, um, Want this font a bit bigger, maybe 20, and then bold, and you pick whatever font you want, but that's the idea to, to show that we've got these um, categories. And I probably, well, I'll save some of this other formatting for later, but one thing I know for sure is the description is going to have to be a lot longer than uh, I have room for there. And same on this side. The date, that's probably reasonable. Quantity doesn't need to be that long. One thing you can do when you when you click on up here to resize a column, if you double click, it will automatically click to the, the space that fits things. Well, like if I do this on total, you see how it shortens that that column. But well, we'll have to adjust those again once we actually get dollar amounts in there because that might not be um, 
the, the current width might not be long enough. Um, and some of these you might want center line. We'll, we'll deal with all that later. But we, I just want to start putting in some, some different um, expenses and income to show you how you could do that. So I've got, I went through, I spent a day sort of going through if I was actually doing this project, what would I need? And this, if you were, if I was actually doing a project on this scale, first of all, it wouldn't be just me. It would be a team of people and we would probably have weeks or months to create what I'm going to create here in just this one video. But so a lot of this is sort of made up, you know, things I found online that seem somewhat reasonable, but it's just the very beginning starting um, amounts. Um, there's not not much realism to this, but just to give you an idea, we need probably a floating platform. And I found that that would cost about $3,500. We need one of them. And then here's where we can start to use um, the, the, the power of Excel. So um, some of these different expenses, there might be more than one. For example, I've got um, like a barrier system where I need to, to buy five uh, five items and I'll, I'll show you that. So you would multiply the amount you're going to pay by how many you're buying. And so when we get in this total column for e, E6, we go up here and we press equals. That tells, that tells Excel that it's a function. And then we select the amount cell, which is C6. And then you do the uh, shift eight, which gives you the, the um, this is a multiplication symbol. In, in coding language, you wouldn't do X. That wouldn't mean multiply. You would, you would do shift, shift 8 to get that symbol, and then you would multiply by the quantity. We only need one of those floating platforms. And then when you hit enter, it will do the calculation for you. 3,500 multiplied by 1 is 3,500. Um, let's put in the rest of these. Um, oh, uh, before I put in the rest of these expenses, one thing you can do is... Um, for every every line that has a different expense, I'm going to want to take the amount and multiply it by the quantity. So I can take that um, I can take that function that we just wrote, and you see this little um, square here. You can click on it and now drag it down, and it copies that that function into all of these cells below. So we'll get the total for each um, the total for each item as we as we input the, the expenses. The next one is a turbidity curtain. Turbidity curtain barrier, which is basically the the floating the floating barrier that that all the plastic at the surface hits and gets swept into the interceptor. And I actually found something that looked pretty reasonable to me, like it could actually be used for this purpose. But they sell it um, in 50 foot sections. Um, so the turbidity curtain for every 50 feet cost uh, $545, and we would need about. Um, this is I have no idea what we would need, but I'm just saying we would need about 250 feet. So I need a quantity of five of those, and you'll see when I hit enter, it does it does the multiplication for me because we already input that function. I, re I realized after I made this entire video that it would have been a good idea to show you how to insert a comment at this point also. So that turbidity curtain that I mentioned, the $545 price, I'm going to go back to where I found it. Uh, and show you how to how to insert. Um, this has got to be it. See, so you, you find a website with a price like this. It looks like the price went up since uh, <laughs> since I checked on this a day ago, but anyway, um, that's the that's why we have the Excel spreadsheet. So now it's seven hundred twenty one dollars and ninety cents uh, per fifty feet uh, if you buy five or more. And so basically, what I want to show you is I'm going to Control C. I'm going to copy this URL, and then I'm going to insert a comment. Uh, new comment right there and I'm going to um, place uh, control V so paste that um, URL for the turbidity curtain turbidity curtain price um, 
and that way, and I, I just realized something else. Um, it tells me the cell that the comment is attached to, so that if I wanted to figure out well, where did where did you, where did I get that price, I wanted to go back. I could I could go back to that URL from my comment because I pasted the URL in the comment. But since I noticed that the price went up, let's just change that also. Seven twenty one ninety. Unfortunately, we're paying more. But that's that's the power of Excel is that I can change this to seven twenty one ninety. And not only will the balance and everything change, but all of these will change, and the, uh, the they'll be reflected on the um, the graphics below. Everything will get updated all at once. Okay, so that's how you can insert a comment to put a URL to remember, remember where you got the um, where you found that pricing. The next expense would be a conveyor belt system. which uh, I spent a lot of time trying to find a reasonable amount for this, and I really don't know if this is reasonable, but let's just go with it, $4,960. I found one for that amount. Um, a motor with solar panels. Because if, if, the, um, if the interceptor is stationary, it's not like a vessel that needs to, to move around, but you do, need, you do need to have some power on the... On the um, interceptor to move that as a, as a plastic hits a conveyor belt you need to move the conveyor belt up into the, the hopper to, to dump into the dumpster so motor and solar panels I figured would cost about 2500 need one of those um, a dumpster to dump the um, plastic into for retrieval uh, would cost, um, let's see, I found, found one for $1,343 and I figure I need two of those because as one is being, as one is being moved out to get, to get recycled, the other, you would need to put one in its place. Um, and then you would have, we want to have a website and a social media presence. Um, and so there'd be a monthly fee for the website, which I estimated would be about twenty uh, $26.95. And all of these, I'm doing all these um, expenses and income. This whole budget is based on an annual budget. And so I'm going to say I would need to pay that for 12 months. Next, um, I just came up with an idea of, you'll see when we do income, some of our income, quite a bit of it actually is based on a social media campaign and a GoFundMe um, crowdfunding campaign to, to raise money, especially since this is the type of a, <clears throat> a project with a lot of, you know, a lot of people would want, would want to um, contribute money to help to, to help towards this cause of cleaning up plastic. So one of the things we're going to give back to the, the um, contributors, it would be uh, promotional t-shirts for the project. Of course, we need to have those made and ship them out and everything. So I'm, I'm figuring $12 per T-shirt, and we'd probably need about a thousand T-shirts. Okay, and then you see, as soon as I input that amount, uh, that quantity, the amount was too big for the column, and so this is where we could go up to this um, point right here and double-click, and it will resize the column. Um, I'm also at the end of my expenses. I mean, this is admittedly a very simplistic uh, example. You would have you would have rows and rows and rows of expenses, maybe even different sheets for different expenses. But um, for for the, for the sake of just creating a budget and seeing how this works, we're going to stop there. And just know when I dragged that function down, and we have all these cells that we don't need, all we have to do is highlight them and just delete them. And if we need them back later, we can copy from here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, I think quantity should be <clears throat> center aligned. So I'm going to just tell, uh, oops, that's probably not what I wanted. I probably want to be more specific here and tell it to center align uh, these things. The amounts, um, I feel like I should be able to do this from here. That, that way, if I get more amounts, yeah, I think I'm going to change this right here. So we want, since these are all m money, you see where you've got uh, different 
things you can choose here. I'm going to choose English dollars or American money, and I want to just make this a little bit bigger so that that, that dollar sign is not running into the first digit so much. That would also be the <clears throat> reasonable format for the total since the total is also in dollars. So let's do that here. And um, the date, um, if you if you knew the date that you purchased, like let's say we actually purchased the floating platform on the 3rd of December, we, we put in 12-3-2019. And Excel seems to know that that's a date, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go up here to uh, format and choose short date. And um, that didn't change anything, but that's because, like I said, I think it already knew that that was a date. Okay, uh, balance will be the total amount that you spent so far. So for this first uh, this first cell, F6, the balance is going to be equal to just this amount, the total for the floating platform, because that's all we, we purchased so far. And you can see we need to resize that. But then we go to F7, that's going to be equal to the, the previous balance from this cell plus this new total amount from this new item that we purchased. And then if I take that cell and I, again, let's see the little uh, square, if you drag drag that down, that will give you a running, running total for the whole project as far as expenses go. In other words, if I buy one floating platform, I spent 3,500, then I bought five uh, five 50-foot sections of this curtain, so another 2,700. That seems reasonable. It's just like using, if you use an uh, Excel spreadsheet, you should treat it just like using a calculator. Don't assume it's doing it right. Don't assume your functions have no errors. Do, 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 do uh, estimates like we do in math class all the time to make sure your, your answers seem reasonable. This, if I add this amount to this amount, 6,200 seems reasonable. And then if I add about another $5,000 to 6,200, 11,200 seems reasonable. So it looks like my function is working as intended. I get this big expense of $12,000 from all those promotional t-shirts at the end, which takes me from about 17,000 to 29,000, which, you know, that's exactly what you would expect. So it looks like everything is working uh, as I would expect it to. And so I feel okay about that. Now we're going to go over and start inputting some income. I'm, I'm making up a, I'm pretending we had a GoFundMe campaign, uh, an initial campaign. Uh, when when um, that Dutch inventor actually did his project, he raised over $2 million in 100 days. And I, I believe I saw on one website when I was looking at this that that was the, the biggest raise ever for uh, GoFundMe. So we could assume that we could actually, even if it was something local, trying to clean up the Caloosahatchee River, you could expect there would be some interest in actually helping with that. Let's just make up a date. 11-25. Um, and I'm going to make sure that that's formatted correctly. Uh, the amount from the GoFundMe, my fictional GoFundMe campaign, I'm, I'm saying $8,500. We're going to format this as money. And we did it once. And so the total would be, we're making a function, it would equal the amount multiplied, so shift 8, by the quantity. And it seems to know that that's dollars, or maybe I already did it, but I'm just making sure. Uh, I can resize those later, but let's put in all the different um, fictional income sources that I I looked up what you could expect to sell salvaged um, recyclable plastic, and I was shocked that I saw a price of 15 cents a pound. That's a lot more money than I would have thought for for that, but let's just go with that. Salvage materials, resale per pound. Um, found 15 cents. 
<clears throat> so 15 hundredths of a dollar. Now the quantity would be how many pounds would we re re recover in a year? And, and now here's where, here's where these projects get extremely difficult, especially if you have perfectionist tendencies. Um, we're imagining this project, just like you'll be imagining your volcano project. You have to base it on something, but it's going to be a, a wild guess, but, but a wild guess based on something. And so here's what I based uh, this wild guess on. Um, when I went through that river video for the interceptor project in rivers, they claimed that um, 1,000 kilograms could be recovered per day. Actually, no. They, re, they, re, they claimed 100,000 kilograms of, of uh, material would be recovered per day. Okay, so the, the number of pounds that we're going to put in as our quantity, as our yearly, our yearly total number of pounds of um, salvageable, resellable material has to be based on something. And, and in the river video for the interceptor, they claim that they're going to be able to salvage 100,000 kilograms of material per day. Now, that's with their super high-tech um, tested um, interceptor system, and ours is just sort of like a, a much lower version um, that, we, that we throw together and give it a shot. And so I'm, I'm saying, I'm starting out with just saying, okay, let's just say we get one one-hundredth of what they're, they're claiming to get, and we only recover 1,000 kilograms per day. And then to make it even more reasonable, I'm imagining only one tenth of that is salvageable and resellable. And so we're going to base our total number of pounds on a 100 kilogram per day or one tenth of that 1,000. Um, 100 kilograms per day is about 220 pounds per day. And 220 pounds multiplied by 365 days in a year would be um, 80,300. 8,300. I was tempted to um, grab a calculator, but the but Excel is a calculator. So let me just double check my. Um, first, I have to tell it I'm doing a calculation here. Equals 220, 220 pounds per day multiplied by. Remember that shift eight is multiply 365. Yep, that's the right amount. 80,300. Now I'll just delete that. <clears throat> now here's where you can use the comments function. This is, this is the type of number that if I were on the shark panel, I would, I would, that would immediately catch my eye and I would ask, what are you basing that number on? And so you want to um, select that cell, right click on it, and see where it says new comment. You wanna click on that and you want to remind yourself, put a comment. Um, um, total uh, 80,300 total pounds estimate is based on one one hundredth of the I'll say Dutch interceptor River project stated total of 100,000 kilograms of material per day. Then assume one tenth of our one thousand kilogram per day estimate is salvageable <clears throat> and resellable. And it's it's got a post button because the idea is you would then be communicating to that to your team or anyone who clicked on that comment. Right now I have no team because I, I forgot to show you how to share this, but we'll do that coming up before this thing's over. But if I post it, then um, when, I'm, when I'm on the cell 
and I can click on that and see the, the um, comment. But when I close out the comments, then all it, all it shows up as is this little, this little symbol reminding me that there's a comment for that amount. And that could be, <clears throat> that could be extremely important to um, remember where you, how you came up with that number. I also don't like now now that we've got quantities in the tens of thousands I don't like our format for this number so I'll show you how to format this you go to number and then hmm maybe I'm supposed to oh more number formats go to more more number formats down here and we'll click we'll select number I don't really need any decimal places but I do want the thousand separator the um the comma to separate that place value and that looks more like we would want 80,300 to look okay I'll just do it I'll just do it this way I'll center them um, and I feel like these need to be a little bit bigger to match over here okay so that was a weird one because we had you know a huge number of pounds but I wanted to see you to see how to handle something like that now I forgot when I created this uh, total that I wanted to copy this function down and so then you'll see that even though we're only getting 15 cents a pound it adds up to over twelve thousand dollars over the course of the year okay the next income source would be from the birdhouse idea that I shared in class so imagine we had another GoFundMe campaign like a second uh, campaign based on the birdhouses you see now that we need a little bit more room here um, and we were, were we're assuming we have volunteers that would um, create the create those birdhouses for us part of the people that are on the team uh, and then we would get uh, $10, or let's just say, um, to make them sound more reasonably priced, $9.95 per birdhouse. And we sold, or imagine that we would sell $2,500. So that in, that total would be pretty substantial, $24,000. And then we, we also talked about having sponsors, corporations that maybe would we would print their name on the turbidity curtain or on the interceptor itself so imagine we have three sponsors for this project sponsor one sponsor two and sponsor three sponsor one donated five thousand sponsor two twenty five hundred and sponsor three twenty five hundred and one of each of those sponsors We can create a balance for our income sources. That's all of our income sources, so I'm also going to delete this. The balance would be, for the first one, would just equal this total. For the second one, it would equal uh, the previous balance plus this total from this new income source. And then we would copy that function down to reflect the, the rest of the income sources. And so we have all of our expenses itemized and all of our income itemized. The next thing we need is um, going to, let's see. I'm gonna um, merge a couple of these cells and have one overall uh, total expenses. And here I'll put the, I'll make this equal to the, the balance at the end of our expenses because that is our total expenses. And over here I'm going to merge these three cells. And I'm going to say total income. And right next to that I'll create a function which just copies the, the value in this cell because that is, the, that balance amount is our total income. Then I'll merge these three cells and call this balance. Forgot to merge them, but I think I can do it after I write this. I can, and then the balance will be the um, the total income minus the total expenses. 
So when I create this function, I do equals, and then I press on the total income, that cell, minus the total expenses. And that tells us we would have a, uh, for, a, for, a for that for that year, we'd have a total amount of income or profit of 26725 now that could be negative if the um, expenses were greater than the income and actually in most real situations you would expect it to be negative for several years before you start to earn a profit and just to show you that that's true let me imagine that we bought 10,000 um, t-shirts and show you how everything would change all of a sudden I'm, sp I'm spending $136,000 on t-shirts my expenses are way higher than my income and a negative balance is reflected in parentheses like this um, on, on, a, on a spreadsheet all the negative amounts would be in parentheses I wonder if that just happens naturally if you do like negative two no it doesn't but it knows if it's a dollar amount and it's negative it should be in parentheses and so that would be a, a loss of 81,000 of course we're not going to buy uh, 10,000 t-shirts we're only going to buy a thousand so you see how when you make you can make one change and everything updates that's the power of using those functions uh, I think the thing to do now would be to start to give this a little bit more um, a little bit better formatting for example all of these would probably be bold maybe even slightly higher font so I'm bolding these increasing the font a couple steps for each of those I'm thinking about whether I want like I kind of want that date center aligned although with the merge cells I never quite know how that's going to work so I'll just I'll just tell it center align the dates uh, the amounts um, I like having the word amount centered but the amounts themselves I think are better the amounts themselves I think are better um, right aligned like this quantity is is fine except now that I've got to make it a little bit bigger to fit that word better total I just want the word centered but the amounts either centered or um, right aligned if they're if they're dollar amounts um, description is better on the left center this center this center these right align these oh, those are already centered right align these center these and then be okay with the widths make that a little wider all right that all looks good <clears throat> you can also um, you've got control over some borders so give that a border which didn't show up so what did I do wrong maybe I just didn't you have to select it and then you know what would actually be good insert uh, a row here maybe even insert a hmm I don't want to insert a column I don't like what that's gonna do okay so there's a border we can give this um, I just want to um, actually what I want to do first is let's make sure we've got these kind of borders to make sure those all look like individual cells do that over here um, probably don't need this row Could probably delete this row and then give this an underline border like this but I want to make it thicker Yeah, it doesn't give me as much control as the the offline version would but it's working it'll work 
You also probably want to um, color code expenses. I would like something red. This will change the font color, <clears throat> which you, you might want to do, but I'm just going to change the background color. I don't have, I want something reddish, but I noticed when I tried doing this uh, before I made the video that I don't have a lot of choices here like I would expect. So that's another um, little d uh, drawback of the online version, but I'm just going to choose, this is reddish, it's orange, so I'm going to choose that one for expenses and for income, something green, shaded somewhat green like that. I'm going to give that color for income to this these cells also and have the expenses match this other color that we choose that we chose balance I'll give a totally different color maybe like a blue and then all of these need to be bigger so maybe like that bold it and then I'll have to adjust this a bit. Uh, this one's fine because this is already so wide. But the balance will need to fit that a little bit better. Okay. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Now, well, I also want to create some graphics for expenses and income to show you how to do that. Now, one thing that I spent a lot of time on when I was trying to figure out how to, how to do this using Excel online is uh, realizing there's something I can't do online, so I'll show you what I mean. I really wanted to create a chart using these cells and the total amounts, which on any any Excel program that's not online, you just hit Control and then you collect, select all the cells. But after doing a lot of digging on some blogs, I found that Ever since 2015, <clears throat> people have been asking for this feature on Excel Online where you can select non-adjacent cells using control, and it's not it's never been added. So that's probably some sort of uh, copyright law issue with the online version, uh, because otherwise I can't imagine they wouldn't have added that by now. But we, we can do something called a workaround. Uh, sometimes people call it a hack. Uh, and it worked fine when I, I figured out this way to do it. If you just take these cells and copy them, so I'm I'm doing Control C, but you could also just say copy from there. Uh, bring them down here and paste them. I, mean, I usually just use Control V, so I'm not sure which version of paste I should use here, but I'm sure that works fine. And then take the totals also, copy them. And paste them down here and then you get this um, you get these errors because of the functions but I just I wanted to copy them so I'd have the same formatting but at this point I'm going to click on each one and just for example for the for B16 I'm going to say equals this amount enter for this one I'm going to say it, it equals this amount enter just do that for each one. This one equals this amount, this cell. This one equals this cell. This one equals this cell. And this one equals this cell. And the reason you want to do that is because now they're adjacent. So I can, I can select all of these at once and then insert uh, a bar graph. Just choose this first one, clustered bar, and it gives me this graphic that shows all of the different um, expenses. It's strange how it almost looks like they're choosing them from the most expensive to the least expensive, except you see that um, it doesn't it doesn't do that at the very end. Like the, the floating platform is a bit more expensive than that 250 feet of turbidity curtain. But for whatever reason, I don't know the I don't know the the logic behind how they order these. But in any case, you get a, a side by side comparison of what's costing the most, which is a nice graphic, and that's what a bar chart is for. A bar graph is for to compare items and categories. But you see that there's a lot of things here that make it hard to read, and so we can. Um, 
improve on this by going up to where it says uh, axes, primary horizontal axis, that x-axis. We want to just say none for that, which now I have no scale at all, but we'll fix that in a minute. And then here where it says um, series one, I believe that's the legend. And we'll just select none for that. And data labels is what we want. If we say um, inside end, that will give us the amount printed right on the um, bar, which is probably preferable. You can sort of see, you can see that the t-shirts the are costing a lot more than the, how could the website monthly charges be $16,000? That makes no sense. Ah, okay, this is what, this is what I mean about checking whether things seem reasonable. I just now noticed a mistake I made. So I knew the website can't cost $16,000. The website for even for the whole year is only $323. So I grabbed the wrong amounts. I didn't want the balance. I wanted the total. And I may have even started doing that. So let's go back to these cells and check what, what's going on here. Um, E6 is correct. E7 is correct. F8. See, I started pulling from the wrong uh, column. And maybe you noticed that. And if you did, good for you. That's but, but that, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to edit this out. I'm just going to leave this mistake in here to show you the kind of things you might run into. The next one should be the 2,500. The next one should be the, um, the dumpster 26,000 from E10. And I want you to watch the website monthly. So watch this bar. When I fix this cell, to equal, uh, when I fix this cell to equal this total, you see that bar goes way down, as it should. So this graphic, this bar chart, all of the changes are reflected, that, that are reflected in any entry will, will be reflected in the chart and the, all the totals and the balance. Um, the promotional t-shirts should actually be equal to this total. And I see that that now says 12,000 as it should. 323. Okay, these all look like the, the totals for the different uh, itemized expenses. And now you wouldn't you wouldn't really want to have this duplicated information here. We did it as a workaround to be able to create this bar chart, but one nice thing is you can just cover it up now. You can just place your bar chart right on top of that so it won't even show up when we when we print it. Um, oh I, I just remember one other thing we want on this chart, we want a title. So chart title above the chart this is these are our expenses okay we're going to make one for income also so let me take let me copy these down to here and copy the totals even though we know we're going to need to input them this equals this total this cell equals this total. This cell equals this total. This cell equals this total. This cell equals this total for sponsor two. Okay, and then I don't. I really don't need to resize this because all we're using, we're just doing this as the input for the the bar chart. But now that I've selected them all and they're all adjacent, uh, bar chart. And I'm going to put it on top of that. I'm going to just make the changes that we made before. No horizontal axis. Um, no legend. But we do want the data labels, um, the inside end. And we do want a chart title above the chart, which, which reminds us that this is our income. And let's see, I think that's it. Okay, so we've got our project title, our expenses, our income, our total expenses, total income, and all of these will change as we change data on this chart. Um, if, if you need to, uh, as, you're, as, you, as you get more items, if you need to add more lines, you just do um, insert row and everything will shift down. Insert another row, everything will shift down, and you can put extra, you know, extra expenses, extra income. 
Um, anytime you do something you want to undo, you've got the undo function. Or you could just delete those rows. Uh, now, <clears throat> there's, there's a couple last things. In order to complete this as an assignment, just so I can make sure that you can create one of these and, and know how to print it, we're going to print it next, but you wouldn't normally, like on your project, you, you wouldn't have this cell, but just let's just do a merge and center somewhere over here where there's some space and put your name. That way when you print it, I'll know whose, whose paper I'm looking at. Um, to print it, you go, you don't have to worry about saving it. It's constantly saving it for you in your, um, your 365. But if I go print, show print friendly view, um, you can see how this is laid out in more of a landscape. And so I'm going to say landscape, the active sheet, the current sheet we're on. Um, you'll probably only have one sheet anyway, but then here's the important thing. You want to go to scaling, fit sheet on one page, and then click print. I'm printing to the J building first floor, but you would be printing to your printer or the library printer. And you should get a printout that looks like this. I printed mine out before I started making this video so you can see that it works. But you turn in tomorrow, you turn in a printout like this with your name on it. So I can see that you can do that. The other thing you want to do, and really the first thing I should have done, um, is to share this. So if you're working with a partner, you're obviously going to share with your partner. But I want you to share it with me, this this example one. And I also want you to share your actual budget with me once you once you start creating it. But the way you do that is you go up where it says share. And then you click, uh, you start putting in, a, like for to share with me, C-C-O-L. And then you see there's my name. So you click on that and share and and hit send and that will share it with me. I'm not going to share it with myself because I don't know what that will do, but you see how to do that. So share it with me, print it, and bring it to class tomorrow. If you run into trouble, at least if you shared it with me, I can see what the trouble was, and that way I can know how to help you next with the next step. And this, this should give us a good start on creating your, your actual um, project budget when you start doing that uh, next week with your partner. Okay, thanks for watching the video.